Howdy, Swim fans. Here's another episode of Whiteboard Wednesday. And on today's episode, we're talking about the dreaded test set. Now a test set is simply a set within a specific workout that allows you to collect data so that you can track your progress and measure something over a specific period of time. Now this could be over the course of a season, over the course of your entire athletic career. And these are sets that are very specific and you really don't do them too often. You might only do these sets once every other week, once a month, or even once a quarter. Now you might ask, why would you do a specific test set? And there's a quote that really exemplifies why this is important, and it's that what gets measured gets improved. And if you're looking to improve your swimming performance, you need to have an indication of how fast you're actually going so that you know what you can improve and where you can get the most benefit. In addition to tracking your progress, this allows you to set goals more specifically because you know exactly how fast you are in specific components and you know how you can improve them. It also gives you accountability because you know you have a target that you're heading for and it allows you to set the goal and really strive to achieve your personal best. And it also inspires a sense of internal competition. Whether or not you swim with a team, with a coach, or with other swimmers, the fact that you have an internal barometer as to where you're going is super, super helpful. Now, a test set is something that corresponds to a specific energy zone. So there's a number of different test sets and no two test sets are actually the same. And it's a good idea to do a mixture of different test sets that test different components of your swimming and physical fitness over the course of a season. What do I mean by that? If we recall the different energy zones in swimming, we have the, the seven zones listed here on the aerobic side and then the anaerobic side. And so we start with recovery and then EN1, 2, and 3. And then on the anaerobic side, SP1, SP2, SP3. To test your physical fitness, you need to do specific test sets that correlate to each of these different zones. And while I don't recommend you do seven different test sets, one for each of the zones, most test sets will correspond into uh, one, they'll fall into one of three different buckets. They're either gonna be a pure aerobic test set or they're gonna be more on the anaerobic side and then the extreme is more on the pace side, so more uh, race specific metrics. So on the pure aerobic side, really focus on what your threshold is in the EN3 category. This would be something like a 30 minute swim where you go into the pool, your main set is 30 minutes of continuous swimming and you try and swim as far as you can in the 30 minutes. So for example, if you swim 3000 meters in 30 minutes, your base 100 time would be one minute per 100 meters, which is really, really fast. So most likely you're not in that category. You might be a little bit slower than that totally okay, but the key is you know what your base 100 time is, so you know what your threshold pace is, and that threshold pace will allow you to refine the strokes, or not, I'm sorry, not the strokes, the intervals that you're doing when you do short rest freestyle sets. And over the course of the season, and as you progress in your swimming career, the goal is to lower your base 100 threshold time so that you can do hundreds on a shorter and shorter rest interval. So at the beginning of the season, you might be able to do hundreds on the 130, and then by the end of the season, you can do hundreds on the 125. So that's the pure aerobic uh, test set category. Now, if we move over to the anaerobic side, uh, two different uh, flavors, and in the pure anaerobic side, you have something like 10 100s best average. So this is really hitting on SP1, the best average, uh, energy zone, and this is, you know, might, might do 10 100s on the 140, and you come in on 105, and this would cause a lot of fatigue at the end of that session, and hopefully you could hold your times together. But that's just one example of an anaerobic set in that category. And then in the pace, which is still in the anaerobic category, uh, but a pace set might be falling more into the SP2 and SP3, really focusing on like a 200 pace. So you do 450s. Uh, holding 200 pace on the two minutes. So if your goal is to go uh, uh, a two minute in your 200 freestyle, you know, these 450s on the minute, you try and hold like 29 or 30 seconds to really refine what your pace would be in competition. So even across these three different categories, there's a different progression. So you don't have to do uh, the same set over and over. You can actually build into the progression over the course of a season and over the course of even your swimming career. So for example, we have four different sets listed per category and each one can be done uh, once per week or once every other week. And the reason why you don't do these every single day is because to have a physiological impact and see improvement from doing other sets from test set to test set, you need to give your body time to adapt. Um, 
and mental clarity so that way you're not completely exhausted if you did a 30 minute swim every single week. You just get burned out and you wouldn't really be able to see the growth that you have uh, in the water. So a progression would be in week one, you go six 500s. So rather than right off the bat, you go you know, 30 minutes of continuous swimming, you start out with six 500s, maybe they're on an interval or about 30 seconds rest. The key is don't let your heart rate go down too much, but give yourself enough time so that you can recover your stroke mechanics so that you can uh, really attack the next 500. The following week or two weeks, depending on how often you do it, you'll go three 1000s. And so this is the same overall distance, but you're giving yourself less breaks. So you're gonna have two breaks instead of five breaks like you did on the six fives. The following session, you're gonna go two 1500s. So now you've cut the break down to only one and you're gonna take 30 seconds to a minute break, really try and find rhythm and really test your aerobic capacity. And then in the final progression of this series on the fourth round, you're gonna go one 3000 continuous. Again, it's a 3000 continuous or a 30 minute swim really your choice. Whatever you do, you're going to get a pretty good idea of what your aerobic 100 potential at threshold actually is. Now that series progression for an anaerobic set is a little bit different. So we think about doing five 200s best average. So maybe they're on the four minute and you come in around 220 or if, if you can do you know two minutes or better, you should be doing them on maybe the three minute, uh, not getting your, more than a minute rest on this type of a set, really to push yourself. And then the following week, you'll do 10 100. So the distance of each of these is actually the same. But as you can see, the, the distance goes down in equal proportion to the number of repetitions that you do. So in the third series, you're gonna go 20 50s. Uh, and maybe these are on the minute and you're holding 30 seconds or less. And then as you move down, you go to 40 25s. This is moving into the you know, ultra short race pace training sector of training. And this is where you really focus on holding your technique and maximizing your potential on every single repetition um, and if your stroke falls apart, then that's not good because you're only doing a 25 at a time. So the key is hold your technique, but really push yourself because you're in the uh, SP1, SP2 category. And then when you're talking about pace, um, this is really something that's a lot shorter. So you're targeting you know, maybe the 100, the 200, or the 400 if you're in meters. And so you start out with 1050s, follow that up with 850s and 650s, and then 450s. And that 450s at the end is essentially to simulate a broken 200. So again, if your goal is to go uh, a 150 in the 200 freestyle in competition, you're gonna be need to hold 27s, for example, on the 50s. And maybe the interval on those is anywhere from the 50 second to the minute, about a one to one work to rest ratio on those. Um, and so you might be wondering to yourself, you know, how can you be successful in doing this? What are some tips? Um, so the key is to plan ahead. Uh, you don't want to just come in and say, today I'm going to do a 3000 for time and really see what I can do. You want to make sure you plan this out so that way you're not overly fatigued heading into this. So you wouldn't want to do a weight room workout right before you do a test set. You want to be really consistent um, and make sure you have a really good technique. And consistency can be not only in how much energy you have, but what equipment you use. So maybe you do test sets where you use paddles. Maybe you do test sets where you don't use any equipment at all. Maybe you do test sets where you had a morning session, uh, you know, six hours before you actually do the test set. The key is to be consistent and accurately record what was happening so that way you have a log and you can go back and see how you're progressing across what you've done in the past. So record your results and the key is to rest. So again, I mentioned it's not really best to do a test set right after doing a super high intensity workout. The goal of the test set is to be that super high intensity workout so that way you can really maximize what you're doing and push yourself to the limit. And the key is to have fun. So don't overstress about doing a test set. Uh, you should look forward to these things because it's an opportunity to take a break from normal training. Really push yourself and see what you've done and see how all the hard work you've done the last few months has really benefited you in the pool. Um, and finally, I want to leave you guys with a, uh, a My Swim Pro test set. And so this is a test set that is a good way to check out your aerobic threshold capacity without the need of doing a 3000 per time. So if you go down to about a 500 distance, rather than doing you know, one 3000, you can start to get a pretty good idea of what your aerobic pace is. Now this is really ideally geared towards a master swimmer, a fitness swimmer, a triathlete. If you're an experienced age group swimmer and you're used to doing five, six, seven, eight thousand per workout, you should be doing a 3000 for time and that's going to be the best way to measure your aerobic capacity. 
However, if your average workout is only two to 3,000 yards or meters in the first place, a 500 is a great way to test your aerobic capacity, and that's how you can enter it into the MySwim Pro app to get your dynamic interval. So here's a look at the workout, uh, starting out with easy 450s freestyle, just a couple hundred yards to get your heart rate warmed up and get a feel of the water. A few 50s kick, you could also do stroke or IM, and then you wanna do about a 200 or 300 freestyle build to get your body into rhythm so that way you can hit it for a 500 right after. If you notice the warm up is only a few hundred meters or yards depending on your pool so, because you don't want to overly tire yourself out. You want to be able to hit a 500 and see how fast you can go and then on our end we work the magic and we parse that out and get your base 100 time and then apply it to the energy zones to give you the most specific intervals in your workouts. After that you'll go 100 easy, then you'll do 100 kick for time, again, same concept, really trying to hit what is your, you test your 100 kick potential, 100 easy, and then do it for 100 IM. You can do the same workout, but replace the 500 freestyle with any of the strokes or the 100 kick or the 100 IM, so that way you're only testing one thing at a time, completely up to you, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how test sets work and how you can use them to your advantage, and hopefully uh, you can use them to really improve your swimming performance from here on out. So if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Would love to learn what the hardest test sets you've ever done are. I know I've had my fair share of difficult ones, so would love to engage in the comments. Until next time, that was Whiteboard Wednesday. We'll catch you later. Bye.